morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 381 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah, yeah. A little jazzy. I'm feeling jazzy. I'm in a good mood. All good in the hood. I'm a jazz guy. Ah, <laughs> ah, today, recording day is Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. And uh, I'm not quite sure what day it's going to be today at the Beaver Lodge. I, yesterday, we ended up having a little bit of absolutely everything. So uh, I guess it's going to, let's call it a Forrest Gump day. The weather is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. There you go. So, I'm your host, the Eager Beaver. Pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Ah, and a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a quick one for you today. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today, sir? Uh, major improvement over yesterday, I can tell you Yay. that. Thanks to, well, thanks to, uh, you know, last night, uh, some self introspection and, uh, ASMR where I get a chance to talk it out and sort of air it out, if you will. And a good night's sleep helped. Uh, I went to bed quite early and abstained from any alcohol because when you're feeling low like that, that's the worst thing you could do because alcohol after all is a depressant. So mm-hmm. I'm on the Guinness zero for the time being, and I'm happy with it because it tastes like a Guinness. But it doesn't, uh, it has no alcohol. So, you know, going on the real big uh, physical and mental health kick right now, trying to get myself into top shape so I can uh, be my best and do my mm-hmm. best and give my best at all times. So, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Although, you know, allergy wise, you can, I'm sure you heard my voice. Yep. I'm, I I'm, even see it in your eyes. Yeah. It's, I'm just, I'm suffering right now. The pollen is so oh. bad. <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing, though. You didn't know me. 10 years ago when I looked like death warmed over. It was like constant, constant draining oh, of sinuses. No. It sounded like this and I was coughing. My eyes were like 10 years ago. I was way worse than I am today. So trust me, incremental improvement. I'll take it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll take yep. it. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, uh, great mood here. Uh, very busy week here at the Beaver Lodge because uh, as you know, Mr. Grizzly, uh, I am in a play. Uh, I somehow, um, I auditioned for three plays that originally were supposed to be at three different times. <laughs> this was supposed to be this time last year, <laughs> but uh, for some reason we lost our venue, and so we had to delay the year. Yes. And then We Will Rock You, which we just closed, uh, was supposed to be auditions last August for a show in October, and uh, they too lost the venue because they actually tore down the school. <laughs> where the auditorium was. 
somewhere. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what happened, but I think they found something wrong with the school at one point, and they decided, well, you know, we're gonna we were gonna tear it down in two years, so let's just do it now. Mm-hmm. They're building another one. Uh, so all, somehow they managed to be uh, scheduled uh, all at once, which is uh, why I have been uh, rather, rather hectic since about mid-December. Um, so when the show closes on Saturday, I am finally, after about four and a half months or five and a half months, going back to regularly scheduled Beaver Life. Uh which is already busy enough as it is. Um, but yes, uh, when we're talking about mental health, uh, I'm going to have to do a couple of things for mine as well. Um, there are, uh, um, I'm going to have to lighten uh, the load a little bit. So there's certain commitments that I've taken that I might have to uh, be stepping back from. Nothing w- with regard to, to the show because it's be able to make time uh, to do this right uh, rather than doing everything haphazard, because the last few months, Kits and Cubs, I'm not sure uh, if it has been showing, because I've been trying to do my best, but uh, there's a few uh, few times that I'm uh, here, and I'm just like literally holding on, like bare-knuckling the handlebar, uh, just because I'm <laughs> not always as prepared as I would like to be, because there are only so many hours in the day, and you do need sleep. Uh, so I'm going to be looking back, uh, looking forward to getting back to my uh, usual quality. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. All right, kids and cubs. Uh, in the news, relatively slow news day. Uh, the prime a lot's time. happening, but nothing. But, but yeah, there's a million stories, right? A million right. stories. But there's the Rive Can story, and there's, you know, when, like I said, there's a whole defense uh, story because Bill Blair was out uh, doing some types of talk there. And then there's the whole Honda story. Uh, because Honda? The Honda, yeah, the Honda. The, 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 they announced uh, a while ago that they were building not <clears> only uh, an electric uh, battery um plant thing plant but a whole electrical vehicle plant to go along with it so the announcement they had one big announcement but it seems that there's like four smaller plants or like one big plant and three other smaller plants that are being announced so yesterday they were announcing the second plant uh so the first one i think was in the niagara region and i think this one is in the port coburn region uh in ontario uh but this one will be a uh we'll have a i believe they said it was lithium ion separation capacity or something, uh, which is a little different. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask the beaver, sweetie, what that's about and get back to you. (laughs) Fortunately, I know a guy. So (laughs) yes, yes, you do. You do indeed. Ooh, speaking of that, oops, sorry. Uh, my thing just went fuzzy. Speaking of that, uh, the beaver sweetie uh, actually did, uh, go into the lab yesterday Mm -hmm. because up until now it was sort of like um all the uh the pre-lab stuff like going to get your picture and making sure you get your fob and making sure you got your safety training because well you know it has been three years even though he knows it you got to take your refreshers right and all of that kind of stuff and then it's sort of like oh yeah you know it's like where, where's my old stuff? And then he yeah. you know, found his old stuff and then it was sort of, and then it's like, okay, okay. He still has some samples, but then you have to order stuff. Legitimately like the <laughs> first day of school nervousness, right? Yeah. But it's like, but the first day of school is about like 10 days because in the meantime, mm-hmm. like, he's doing the final revisions to the paper. Right. Like this. And he's not teaching this semester, but the second semester in the, in the summer se- session. So he's not teaching May, June, but July, August. He will. Well, you know, he's good. He's doing his course preparation for that. So he, <laughs> it's sort of like but the other day he was sitting there and he was going like, gee, he was like, I thought I'd be started going off to the races by now. It's like, it's like, you don't walk the first day onto the job. And it's like, hey, you know, like this, I just cranked out a marketing plan. It's like, uh, so the password for your new computer, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, this is the pace we're going at. Okay. <laughs> so he's like a racehorse, you know, he's just like, it's like, like science. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love him. He is so cute. <laughs> you know, people are never more attractive 
in the magnetic sense. It could also be in a sexy sense, but in a magnetic sense, then when you're, they're doing something at which they're good and they know they're good. Right. And they're doing it confidently. You just watch them go. It's like, damn, look at you. Hey, you know, when you like, you're watching somebody who really knows how to cook, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, you're just like, mm. I could just watch you cut. Because mm. <laughs> sometimes it's just a thing of beauty, right? So, yeah. So everybody needs a chance to shine. Yes, Kit Argosi Acres, science for the win. So, yeah, there's all this news. Uh, and uh, one of those little bits of news was the prime minister uh, was out to make an announcement uh, on child care, I believe it was, to the, yesterday. Uh, I believe he was in St. Thomas. Mm. I'll have to check that out. And he had like uh, two hundred uh, million dollars. Yes, exactly. St. Thomas visit. Oh, and this picture. Oh my God. Okay, I have to show it because okay. this is amazing. This again. This this is how you know he's a dad. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. I saw another uh, one last year in a. Uh, in the uh, campaign where he was like holding a baby while mm. somebody was making and there was a, a woman at the podium that was talking and he was actually holding a baby. It was another child care announcement and he had uh, uh, mothers all over the internet going, you can tell he's a dad and he's not faking it. Look, he's got the hip pop. He's got the, you know, he does, like this where the baby's resting. It's like, you can tell he doesn't do the, he's not just like hold the baby. He does actually does this in real life. Oh yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's not all Sophie. So it was like, Oh, okay. Okay, cool. It's like, just like ask a mom. They'll know. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kit Michael right there. This looks like my face. When I first got to my daughter after her commencement on the weekend, I saw the picture. That's one proud Papa. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so yeah, he was uh, out in St. Thomas making that announcement. And uh, according to the London free press, um, the federal government will increase funding to help Ontario families access childcare. Visiting the Station View YMCA Child Care Centre in St. Thomas, Trudeau said Ottawa will invest more than $200 million to build new childcare spots across the province amid continued efforts to lower the cost to parents. Quote, we'll invest over $2 million in childcare infrastructure, creating more spaces and greater access for Ontario families. This investment will help Ontario reach our goal of creating 86,000 new childcare spaces by 2026. So... There you go. According to the article, eight out of 10 provinces have reached the $10 a day average already. Wow. The plan was for that to happen in five years. So the provinces have bought in. So this is interesting because I think PP had a little bit of a, I'm going to take that away. But if eight of the 10 provinces are already at the $10 and people are already experiencing it, and it seems that the provinces, if they accelerated it, because the provinces, you know, they know how to misdirect money. Oh, yes. So if they're already doing it, they must see the economic case for it. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. So Ontario still isn't there, though. Eight out of the ten. And mm -hmm. one of them is not Ontario, the largest one the one that would generate the most economic boom for the entire nation. Just letting the economic active uh, opportunity go by, just given eight of the 10 other provinces and competitive economic advantage. The Doug Ford parade of incompetence marches on. Need, need to, uh, we need to address uh, something from uh, just yesterday, actually. I understand there was some mistakes made in some of the numbers for uh, that you're reporting on for wildfire. I don't there know were? Yeah, yeah. I think you said something along the lines of 98 million square kilometers, which is not possible because there's not... Oh, sorry. Square kilometers. Yes, yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of the... You had, you had made... It's, it yes. happens. I right? think I added a zero. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so somebody sent out sent a, a message regarding that in yesterday's <laughs> show, and I was like, huh, what? Oh, yeah, mm, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, like, <laughs> well, actually, it's 10,000 meters square. 
It says, let me see here. Oh, I'll, I'll just read back the read. Uh, did I say kilometers? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, meters, meters, yeah, meters yeah. square. It says, Sorry. according to Douglas, Canada has burnt from coast to coast 10 times this year already. Weird stuff around here. <laughs> <laughs> One hectare is 2.4 acres. Canada is 9.9 .9 million square kilometers. 3.5. Oh, so sorry. 3.5 million. 3.5 Canadas are on fire by fire. <laughs> I am so sorry. Meters, not kilometers. Yeah. So, so I, I, yeah, yeah. So I put a, I put a, a note in it. It's just notes. It was comments from yesterday's show. I said mistakes were made. We will be happy to correct them. <laughs> And I, you, I had when I'd I was listening to it last the... night because you know I was tied up. I didn't. I wasn't really taking full part of the show yesterday. But I was listening to it. I'm like 98 million square kilometers. I'm like, he can't be right about that. That's got to be off. I think 98 million square kilometers is um, a lot more. <laughs> and I was so confident when I said it. It happens. Had I been there, I would have right away said, uh, "Don't you mean meters?" Because I made sure I got okay, so I didn't carry too many zeros. Because yeah. I was, I was, I really made sure I got the math right. Because I thought that the number was really impressive. <laughs> I'm sitting there. Ninety-eight million I, square kilometers, I think, is um, I the biggest kilo. planet Earth. <laughs> I, I, I had the K to the M. Oh my word. It, you know, mistakes are made. That happens. <laughs> I knew you'd get a chuckle out of it. But I was listening. I'm like, what? The whole world's literally on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and then some. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I did I did put in, if you look at the comments from yesterday, they, they were not rude. They were just, well, according to your math. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, whoever submitted the gentle correction. Arnie Pedersen. Glad, Arnie Pedersen. I, yeah, so thank you, Arnie. I gladly yeah. accept it. Oh, my God. Jeez. Canada is a total of 9.9 .9 million square kilometers. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, things happen. Mistakes are made. And this is why, kids, we don't exaggerate. <laughs> if I told you once, I told you a million times. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, I love it. Love it. Yes, yes, Kathleen, I have the giggles. That's the, hey, you know what? When I mess up, I mess up big. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna go Jeez. so large. Uh, kid Vim, it's okay, Douglas. When I was doing my taxes, I used a calculator for two plus two. Oh boy! <laughs> That's, uh, I'm I'm sure that was within the sequence, right? Yes. Of... <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Okay. So, ooh, okay. Who needs rails, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I mean, it's it's you know, it's good for a larf. Hey, good for a larf, eh? Oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's see. All right. Okay. So since we're talking about wildfires, <laughs> according uh, to the CBC, uh, the bl uh, the blaze uh, in Fort Nelson is continuing to grow in size and in intensity. Uh, it forced a complete evacuation of the community. Uh, and uh, the situation has been uh, complexified, if that could uh, be a word. I don't know if that's a word, actually. I don't know if I'm uh, taking a French word and turning it into something there. English. Uh, but it's becoming more complicated by the fact that another wildfire coming from the south has forced uh, the evacuation of the Doig, I believe it is, River First Nation. I might be mispronouncing that. And it's possible that Fort St. John will be next. And that would be, uh, again, another layer of complexity because Fort St. John is the place to which everybody in Fort Nelson and from the Fort Nelson First Nation evacuated originally. Mm. And that was already full, so people were going to Grand Prairie instead. So it looks like, um, yeah, if Fort St. John has to evacuate, all of a sudden now we've got uh, the about, uh, uh, well, we've got about 4,500 people that have left from Fort Nelson and then everybody from Fort St. John all going somewhere at once. Wow needing places to go yeah. that's going to take a lot of coordination yeah I definitely have the dedicated uh, individuals who will certainly help with that 
Yeah. Uh, so, um, John Roper, who's a Fort Nelson city councilor, he's now sh- who's now sheltering in Grand Prairie. Uh, he says it all happened uh, very quickly, but I'll say that you know that we were prepared to leave just when the conditions and the predictions for the hot summer uh, came along. It wasn't a huge surprise, but it happened. And uh, so uh, this may soon become an annual thing. Mm. Yeah, that's the annual that's... packing of the bags in April to be able to bolt at a that's moment's notice. When you think about it, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, like I said, there are things changing. You know, like when the, like I said, when I heard the uh, El, the first Alberta NDP leaders debate, and the first question was about water and water management. And now people are talking about, you know, emergency preparedness, always having something ready to go as soon as the spring comes. Life is changing. Life is changing. Um, In Alberta, there was some light rain and some favorable winds that helped uh, fight out of control wildfires outside Fort McMurray. That blaze, uh, according to, uh, I guess, I'm not sure if this is late last night information or early this morning information. Uh, it's about 65 square kilometers in size. Uh, while wildfire, uh, fires, uh, wildfire fires are working on another growing fire outside Grand Prairie, which is just about four kilometers from the hamlet of Teepee Creek. Um, yeah. It's pretty... Uh, it's pretty scary. The fire in Fort McMurray has not grown in size, fortunately, because of those conditions. It's still holding at about 6,500 hectares, but officials still consider it out of control. Uh, but there is some forecasted rain, so crews are hoping that uh, that will help over there. So, um, yeah, this is a, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Remember again, kits and cubs, uh, if uh, people need to be able to access information and they have low bandwidth, www.cbc.ca slash light, L-I-T-E, low bandwidth service. Uh, make sure that people have the ability to uh, stay con- connected to information because uh, situations like this change very, very, very quickly. Right? Wind behavior, you, you, you just never know. All right. Uh, In other news, uh, Mr. Grizzly, (sighs) do you have anything? Well, we have an announcement to make. Yes. Yes. I had forgotten about that. Yes, please. Uh, So you know how we've discussed. Well, I'll I'll, I'll give the lead up and then you can, you can. Okay. I'll give the wind up and the pitch and you can hit the, hit it out of the park. So, you know, how we've discussed, uh, uh having a, uh, a mental health walk, men, e, M capital M capital E capital N mental health walk to raise awareness about uh, how men suffer from, uh, having the lack of outlets and, and places to discuss how they're feeling and, and what they're going through. So we decided to, to, you know, to stage a mental health walk on June 15th, which is a Saturday, the day before Father's Day, which I think is fitting because fathers are men and they need help too. And we'd like mm-hmm. to see men either, it's their choice whether they want to become fathers or not, of course, but we'd like to see them grow to ripe old ages instead of shuffling off this mortal coil by their own hand. So that's why we want to raise awareness about men's mental health, because I think it's something that doesn't get nearly enough focus. Mental health is getting more focus, which is good. Um, it's great, but I, I, I'm, I'm really going to lean into men needing it because I'm very clearly a man and it took me forever to open up. I mean, I suffered in silence for almost 40 years. I don't suffer in silence anymore. I still suffer. And, and here's the thing, because I was so ensconced in the keeping it quiet, keeping it hidden from anybody, put the mask on, even when I'm suffering. I don't show it to people, but I might say, yeah, I'm just in a bad place right now, I, mm-hmm. I, which is a huge step. You mm-hmm. know, and I'll talk about it on the ASMR. Uh, so that's, that's why, and it was, it was, uh, our buddy, uh, Pete in, mm-hmm. in Australia who went on a 25 kilometer mental health walk. And I said, well, we should do something like that here. So I suggested it and we came up with the date of June 15th. We're trying to assemble it and put it together. And guess what? 
we're going to be doing it June 15th. It's just going to be 5K, maybe a little under 5K. We're going to loop around Centertown, the site of the occupation. Uh, we'll start probably, I'm thinking, at the Museum of Nature. Go down Gladstone, all the way up Bank Street to Parliament Hill, up around the hill, back down maybe into the market. I haven't mapped it all fully out yet. And then we'll finish at the Left Hunnett's Pump, where we'll do a Saturday afternoon pubcast. Can we walk up along the canal and maybe come up the bridge to get to the pump? Sure. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do that. We'll, we'll cross over. Mm -hmm. We can cross over at Rideau mm -hmm. and walk along the canal on that side and then mm -hmm. take take uh, the uh, Lovelock Bridge mm -hmm. at Ottawa U over and then boom, over onto Elegant Street and down out oh. the pump. Yeah, I don't so, think it's the Lovelock Bridge. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll plot it all out. So... So we're going we're gonna to come up with a t-shirt design and we'll have them on the merch store if anybody wants to purchase them. Uh, we haven't got it done yet, but it will come along soon. We'll have a t-shirt up, so if you want to purchase it, it'll be the first, uh, hopefully, hopefully annual. And maybe we'll say first and put hopefully in parentheses annual <laughs> mental health <laughs> one. And I'd like to do it every, every June uh, Saturday, the day before Father's Day. I think that's a fitting time to do it. And we uh, had reached out to... Um, someone we had had on the show a little while ago who was a big advocate for talking about mental health and is very open about the struggles that he's faced and how he's doing much better. And sir, would you like to knock it out of the park for us, please? All right. So um, we had been talking about this in plotting and scheming, and uh, I finally had some time to act on it. So uh, I wrote uh, somebody with whom I had, I guess we could call it a business interaction. Mm-hmm in order to uh, get to this guest on the show the first time. And I said this. Hello, Ed's Douglas from the True North Eager Beaver Podcasts. I hope this finds you doing well. I'm writing to ask you if you'd be so kind as to present, I will leave the name out for the moment, mm -hmm. with the following opportunity. A few weeks ago, our friend Pete in Australia, who designs our graphics, participated in a walk for men's mental health called Spoke to a Bloke. The goal was to raise money for peer support programs that encourage men to share with each other, give many study given many studies show that men report having nobody to talk to when they go through tough times. As you know, at the start of every show, we ask, how's your mental health doing today? So we thought this was a good idea and wanted to do something similar. We decided to organize an informal to North Eager Beaver mental health walk to take place in Ottawa on the afternoon of June 15th. We would gather at a spot downtown and have chosen a five, an about approximately five kilometer route down sidewalks and walking paths, no street closures required, that a group of listeners will walk together. Then we will stop at a local pub to do a live broadcast of our monthly podcast, No Politics, Just Pub Chat, and perhaps have some mus musicians. We hope to raise a little money for a yet-to-be-determined organization via donations from our listenership across the country. The reason for which we are writing is that following the broadcast of our interview with... His wife had written to us via Twitter to express compliments for our effort and to suggest we eventually do a second interview with them both to talk about, among other things, issues pertaining to men's mental health. We think that such an interview could dovetail well with our very informal, quickly put together first year effort on a walk. We would be most pleased if the senator and his wife would be willing to agree to a time for such a conversation to occur. In addition, should one or both be interested in having a greater role, we'd be happy to accommodate and excited about the opportunity to collaborate. If they would like to say a few words at the walk itself, prior to it, after it, or both, if they'd like to be named as official patrons of the walk event, if they would like to chat with us on the pubcast on the day of the event, we can ensure that the segment of our episode, though it takes place in a pub, is dry, out of respect. Mm -hmm. Yes. For current campaigns. Absolutely. We are open to whatever they'd be willing to contribute. Thank you so much for your consideration and assistance with deep appreciation. True North Eager Beaver. So that's what we sent out. Now, if you've been paying attention, you, you might, might know who it is you because I, gave, I dropped a little hint. Yes, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I purposely dropped a little hint. Senator, indeed. So uh, the response we received uh, from the office of Senator Patrick Brazo, Kids and Cubs. Good morning, Douglas. I hope you're doing well. What a wonderful idea. Senator Brazo and Mary Claire are excited to join the walk June 15th. They'd bo be both participating in the podcast and would be delighted to have an interview as well that day. Looking forward to the event. Have a wonderful day. So we're good to go, kiddos. 
Mental Health Walk. Uh, we we should come up with a proper name for it, though. Like not just Mental Health Walk. It's uh, I like Mental Health. Walk. Oh, well, yes, M E N capital M. M E N. Yeah. yeah. Um, we need to have a tagline: Mental Health Walk for the men in your life. We'll figure that one out. We'll if you have sug- if you have if you have suggestions, kids and yes. kids, please. If anybody has a suggestion, please put it, and you'll get full credit for the suggestion if we use it. Oh, Kit Linda, you should write to Margaret Trudeau too about it. This is right in her bailiwick. Oh my! God. Actually, you're right. You're right. Damn, that would be something. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Care. Thanks, yeah. Linda. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Linda. Let's yeah, let's reach out to the PM as well. Yeah, because he's a big advocate for mental health. He is indeed. Now I know it's. I would not expect to get him, especially June fifteenth, the security detail and everything. But if we, if you sent that same sort of letter out, something yeah. similar to his office to let him know, look, we understand that doing this in this time frame is impossible. We get it, but um, perhaps next year. Yeah. Plus, I mean, if he was involved, there would need to be street closures. And yeah, stuff exactly. Like I mean, it wouldn't. Yeah, it could. It couldn't be the grassroots street, thing. No, but it would be good for his office to know about it. I think. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I mean, the fact that Senator Brazo is coming out, there, I'm like pff, over the moon. When you sent me year that email one? yesterday, it was like awesome. Year one, yeah. Well, and and of course, like you said, he he's a big advocate for mental health, and, he and has been for the last number. But it of seems years. that his wife might be even more. Yeah. So this is awesome. This is so great this, news. Our interaction was delightful. So I'm I'm very very much looking forward to meeting her, and uh, she is a very very accomplished in her own right. Hmm. Hmm. So, um, this is, I mean, we could have an interview with her alone just on what oh, she yes. does. Oh yes. So <laughs> it would be fascinating. Uh, you have Kit Carroll here. It says, uh, my mom died because of schizophrenia and years of being untreated because she didn't believe she was sick. This is very close to my heart. Uh, Carol, um, uh, I empathize very much with you. My mom also, uh, schizophrenia. Um, she was aware, but, um, uh, yeah, also died as a result of it at one point, uh, had a break, and which led to uh, inducing a stroke, which eventually led to COPD, which led to... So yeah, it's... Um, I, I see you and I feel you. Mm-hmm. Men not walking alone. So mental health, mental health walk, men not walking alone. Oh, Kit, Mr. Jim. I think I think that's it. That uh, well, that that's that's definitely definitely a, a front runner. Yeah, now, the oh, kids yeah. are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, they came up with mental health. They came. With, geez. Oh yeah. Yeah, you. Was, mm, we're just yeah, we're just, you. We're just the yeah, conduit to get the but, message out there. But I like this. I like this because you know, there's like starting a project yourself. Like when we started this, it was just you and me together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then now this is like, it's almost like a community project, right? It's like everybody's yes. like throwing stuff in. It's like, I, I like it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I didn't think I could do country here. So there you go. <laughs> that was a jazzy country though. <laughs> you gotta throw, you gotta put some twang on it. You well, yeah, I could do that. I too. like I it. I like it. I love it. I, love it. I want go. some more of it. That's country. I was weaned on country. <laughs> jazz blues jazz and blues on one side country on the other we have well, both kinds of music on. we have country and western <laughs> <laughs> ah mr jim you inspire us douglas law thank you that's very sweet but uh no uh pete's the inspiration on this one kit pete's the inspiration on this one his idea is going uh, uh is is going quite a long way so uh, wow i've let him know uh, hopefully uh I uh, get the message soon. I haven't heard from him yet there. <laughs> ah, Cassie like, yeah, boot scoot and beaver. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Let's see. What else have we got here on? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, that's really about it. Canada wise. Well, no, not really. N- n- well, not mo- really, but I mean, t- there's, there's nothing really juicy. Well, I think this is kind of juicy. Let me, let me put this on the screen for you. I think this is kind of juicy. Oh, yeah. 
him. Sorry. <laughs> I try not to think about these people. Just... Criminal trial of Freedom Convoy organizer Pat King begins with not guilty plea. Yes. Well, of course you expect him to plead not guilty. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. But wouldn't, wouldn't that be something? The first... Okay, damn it. I did I mean, it. I already did served it. the damn time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get this over with. So, yeah. <laughs> His, his trial has begun. Well, I in mean, earnest. Was was there anything interesting? Because you know, I mean, it's the thing is, is that oh, Salunius, I feel free to share my picture. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, if I can get it to the phone to the computer kit, Michael, I might do that because it's a beautiful picture. If you de- um, if you DM it to me via the Twitter, I can share it. Uh, yep, I could do that at one point. Hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, the Pat King trial uh, started. I, uh, I don't know if there's anything uh, interesting in the article about something uh, that's there, but um, not not a whole lot. It's just you know. Yeah, I think the first stage is a little more procedural and stuff, right? The first, yeah, pretty much. This is uh, this case. So it's this case is straightforward. Hang on, let me just move this so I can look better into the camera as I read it. This case is straightforward. It's not about politics. It's not a debate about the government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Long, 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 Giroux, Giroux, L-O-I-G-N-O-N. What? Giroux told the court. L-I who? L-O-I-G-N-O-N. Emma Long, Long, Giroux. Oh. Long, Long, Giroux. Long, 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 Okay, Emma, the crown attorney. Okay. She told the court Monday. Um. This case is about Mr. King's conduct. She began the Crown's case by describing life in Ottawa during the Freedom Convoy, in in quotation, protest, and the severe disruptions and nearly intolerable conditions residents of the city faced. The sound of air horns blared through the courtroom as she played an 11-minute compilation video to show the court some of the scenes she described, including streets blocked by trucks and crowds shouting, Freedom and We're Not Leaving. The Crown's first witness, Victoria de la Ronde, answered questions about the fear and exhaustion she experienced as a blind woman living six blocks from Parliament Hill during the mm-hmm. protest. Yeah, I remember her testimony at the commission. Yes. Once the protest began, she could no longer navigate the familiar streets around her home because big rigs and other vehicles blocked her way, she said. The audible signals she used to cross the street safely were drowned out by the blare of horns and rumble of idling engines, which kept her up all night. She described feeling trapped in her home, a feeling that still affects her more than two years later. She has only ventured out of her home on foot by herself a handful of times since, she said. She told the court and uh, let's try that again. She told the court under cross-examination that she is a member of a class action civil lawsuit led by Ottawa lawyer Paul Champ against several convoy participants, which names King as a defendant. Given her visual impairment, Champ came along as a friend when she was interviewed by Crown Counsel ahead of King's trial, she said. Delaron previously testified before a Federal Commission inquiry into the use of the Emergencies Act. Several other witnesses the Crown intends to call also testified in the criminal trial at Tamara Leach and Chris Barber, two of the most prominent organizers of the convoy. None of the witnesses had any contact with King himself. The defense also also intends to call evidence in the case. King's lawyer, Natasha, 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 Calvin Ho, Calvin Ho? I think that's how I pronounce her name. Natasha Calvin Ho said Monday, the court has set aside three weeks to hear the case. So... We'll see what happens with that. All right. Interesting. Thank you. Um, also, let's see. We've got a couple of minutes. I just want to make sure we end on time. All right. Um, another bit of news that came out of Alberta. Uh, it seems that uh, one of the candidates for the NDP leadership has dropped out. Oh, because we would want we uh, we mentioned this during the debates, right? That they needed to reach uh, some fundraising stuff, and we were wondering if they were going to remain in. Uh, if there was one that was going to, uh, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, according to the National News Watch. Uh, from uh, with Canadian uh, and it's a Canadian press article here. Alberta NDP leadership candidate Gil McGowan says he's bowing out mm-hmm. of the race to replace Rachel Notley. McGowan says that the final installment of the sixty thousand dollar entrance fee proved to be too high a bar. His announcement comes as the New Democratic Party says it has just over eighty five thousand members, more than five times its tally in December. The party says it has never had so many members eligible to vote in its history. Notley announced in January she would be stepping down from the job, and the field of contestants has whittled down to four. 
uh, Racky Pancholi had uh, dropped out earlier in the race. So yeah, this is not the first, but the, the second one uh, to drop out. In a statement Monday announcing his withdrawal, McGowan, who's the head of the Alberta Federation of Labor, celebrated the party's membership sales as great news. Quote, this is a real testament to both the hard work and vision of all the candidates and also the strong desire among so many Albertans to build a viable alternative to the United Conservative Party. During a leadership debate Saturday, McGowan made a plea for donations. Quote, if I don't raise another $50,000 soon, I'm toast, he said. <laughs> Results of the leadership race are to be announced June 22nd. It is kind of interesting, you know, when we're mentioning uh, on the prairies how the NDP is probably a little more like traditional progressive conservative party that we knew when we were younger, more yes. than a, an Ed Broadbent kind of NDP, uh, because the one candidate that actually represents labor is the second one out mm -hmm. in a field of six? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Cassie, uh, I believe there was something like that. Uh, did McGowan's campaign release a letter when then she was mayor trying to label him a union buster and it backfired? Uh, Nate at the breakdown had a thread about that. I believe I, I did see something that I'm, I'm not, I, I, w I won't absolutely confirm that, but I do believe I saw something real related to that at some point. Okay. Um, the other uh, big thing going on with regard to that is because um, a moment in the debate, the most recent debate, uh, Nahed Nenshi referred to um, people on the other side of the aisle mm -hmm. in the legislature as monkeys. Yes. Yes. Uh, now, uh, we'll show the clip. Uh, of what it is. It's just 19 seconds. Um, this strikes me yet again as another um, twofer, twofer part twofer. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, comparing people to monkeys and gorillas and whatnot in certain contexts can very, very definitely be super racist. Um, but I've compared members of the opposition to howler monkeys. So have I. On the show, right? There is comparing it because it has something to do with skin tone. And then there's comparing it because it's behavior. There's a difference. So uh, it seems some people are trying to run with uh, the whole thing that there's something racist going on. But um, here's the thing. Um, boop, 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 breaking news. Uh, Canada, drop everything because apparently the fuck your feelings party has some thoughts about some very big feelings it's experiencing because someone said monkey. You heard it here first. <sighs> sure. You know, Jody, you've been sitting opposite these guys. And I have been to question period a grand total of once in my life. <laughs> and I was watching you and your colleagues and watching these monkeys on the other side. <laughs> Can we influence them at all from opposition? From or what I've witnessed, them? Ranger. You know, Jody, you've been sitting opposite these. Yeah. Now, you heard the audience reaction. Mm -hmm. Didn't go over well. No. I would not recommend doing that. It's right up there with basket of deplorables and all that kind of yeah. stuff. You don't do that, but he did. Because, no. Of course, in this case, he's clearly talking about being the legislature. He's talking about the opposition MPs and not the voters, but the voters do put them there. Um, as commentator, referring to them as a bunch of howler monkeys, that's fine. Mm -hmm. this, you know, we already got trained seals, right? <laughs> yes. I guess, or you could say rabid hyenas. So, but usually comparing, trying to compare people to animals when you're running for a leadership is not particularly statesman. Exactly. It could be misconstrued. But um, clearly, the use of monkeys here is not in a racial context. Right. So no. you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of BS. This, right. Just a general BS alert. <laughs> All right. Yes, we do need to class up our language. 
in a in an effort to uh, be the first uh, to the microphone and a camera with a colorful metaphor that will get attention that to hopefully spark outrage or solicit engagement or whatever. Um, yeah, we uh, sometimes uh, are a little careless about the words that we choose. We're often a little careless about the way in which we approach each other. We assume the worst of their intent rather than simply first asking them, hey, what did you mean by that? Yes. Um, I think it was, I understood, I understood what he was saying, but it was like, oh, dude, yes. Yeah. I guess we, um, or we like to uh, first uh, engage in certain behaviors which attempt to put people on the back foot so that they're first defending, uh, which is really, really, really abusive behavior. Mm -hmm. Nobody should do that. Nobody should be engaging, trying to engage you in a conversation where they try to put you in a position of vulnerability in order to either intimidate, bully, or dominate you, and to either be being quiet or not talking about a certain subject because they don't like what it is that it is you're saying. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we need to be a little more careful with our words. And uh, when we come to people, we need to learn to come correct. Well, yes. There's a way that people are supposed to, there's a minimum standard that people should be able to expect as being a living human being on the planet to how other people will first approach them or engage with them or interact with them. There's a minimum respect. That's an entry level. Because if you don't come with that, you don't get to interact. Ow. Oh, Knocked over my tripod and it hit me in the knee. Oh no. Oh no. So yeah, you know, uh, be okay. Kits, Uh, you know, especially if you have a life online now, Right? Yes. Like this. If somebody is not coming to you correct or somebody's just trying to like to, you know, put words in your mouth, so mute. Mm-hmm. You have the power. Mute block. Trust me. It's worth it. When somebody has an issue and they're trying to make it your issue and you don't have the time or the inclination or the interest, don't take on the issue. Indeed. Just be too busy living your best life. <laughs> Mr. Chrisley, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. We do All indeed. Right. Get some cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. And you have the mouths from which we want the words to come. So please. Please, please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you would like to support us, you can. You don't have to miss a show because of the Ray Girl. If you scan the QR code that Mr. Grizzly will put there under my chin, that will bring you to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And then you click subscribe there. When we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it'll come directly to you. And hey, if you want to be, uh, have more beaver in your life, well, you can do that thanks to our merch store where we got so much beaver. It's like a smorgasbord of beaver, a buffet of beaver. Ooh, beaver buffet. I like that. That's kind of, that sounds naughty and delicious at the same time. <laughs> if you scan that QR code under my chin, Mr. Grizzly Slushing, <laughs> or go to etsy.com slash ca slash shop slash T-N-E-B merch store, all in one word, there you can get all the beaver your little heart desires. Oh, if- and, and speaking of T-N-E-B merch store, when we uh, get the t-shirt design for the mental health walk, the proceeds from the sales of the t-shirts will go to a local mental health charity. As well, yes. 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 All right. Um, let's see. What else have we got for you? Oh, please make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver page. There she is. Have a beyond awesome day, everyone. Remember to smash the button before you leave. Like, share, subscribe. True North Eager Beaver Media YouTube page. Click those buttons. Get us some happy. All right. And then if you would like to support us in other ways, the QR code that's right by Mr. Grizzly's Dome, that will bring you to our tip char. At our coffee page, coffeeko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And uh, if you have a little bit of change there, if you'd like to support us, uh, you like our cheekiness, we make you laugh, we make you smile. Hey. 
ah, someone's got the QR code. Thank you. See, I just shake it and the QR code scan happens. Maybe Thank that's you. the trick. Maybe I just need to shake it a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for all your support. We really appreciate it. If you want to write to us, true north eager beaver at gmail.com. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, stars and reviews, very, very appreciated. Thank you so very much. Uh, you've been putting us back on the charts again the last uh, few days. So uh, thank you so much. We really do appreciate that as well. Uh, if democracy, because democracy is something that you do, not if, but because it is, please, if you're in Alberta, get involved in one of the leadership races. And if you are in Saskatchewan or New Brunswick, uh, please, uh, or British Columbia, mm -hmm. uh, because you have elections come on, coming in, please, please, please uh, find out what it is that you can do. Maybe you can help at a polling station. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager Beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. I'm going to steal a line uh, from, uh, well, it, it wasn't his original, but it was the most memorable uh, statement thereof. And it was when uh, Barbara Walters first became an anchor on ABC World News Tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the 70s. And it, she took a lot of heat. Because, you know, what's a woman doing there? The late Barbara Walters. And it was the late John Wayne who, I had a lot of problems with that guy. But the late John Wayne sent her a letter. In the letter he sent uh, uh, to her, it said, Dear Barbara, don't let the bastards get you down, John Wayne. That was it. So the guy, he was a problematic individual, but he really supported her because he knew she was good at her job. So what I'm saying to you today is don't let the bastards get you down. I know it's hard to keep your chin up sometimes. I really do. Especially when you can get bombarded from a hundred different ways today. So maybe if you need to unplug from social media for a little while. Take some time for yourself. It's mm -hmm. important. Absolutely. self -care. And, uh, But uh, not before you listen to Mr. Grizzly's ASMR. Yeah, that might help. And you take know. a social media break. <laughs> and take the social media break. Yeah. Well, that's I'm, a mental I'm health. That's a mental I'm health sailless. improvement. I'm shameless. <laughs> Mr. Grizzly, cue the cock, please. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss v. Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. I know you got to go, so I didn't prepare anything for the Easter egg. Oh, okay. Well, I, I have a quick one for you that I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, let's do uh, it. Let me just, I, I clicked the wrong button. I'll bring this up and I'll blow it up. I'll put it on the screen and I'll read it out. It, it's, it strikes me as odd. Um, that he's stumping. Uh, it's not, what he's saying isn't untrue, but at the same token, I, here we go. From the food professor. Only in Canada do you find individuals orchestrating boycotts against Canadian businesses, inadvertently benefiting foreign-owned retailers such as Walmart and Costco. Ironically, the very entities that compelled Canadian grocers to evolve into the powerhouses they are today. I hate being right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when he's right. When he's right. He's right. But at the same <laughs> token, those Canadian businesses... They yeah. are powerhouses, and yes. they are gouging us. Yes, but here's okay. What's your solution? Yeah. Okay, you've mocked us. Okay. Now point us. Now steer us in the right direction. Yeah. If you just mock us, right? But if you think we're being stupid because we're doing this, and you somehow that presupposes that you know the right way, mm -hmm. then guide us. 
Yeah, tell us, tell us what to don't do. Don't keep then. it. For, oh, don't keep it one. to yourself. <laughs> That's how you know. It's like even though it may be true, the intent is bullshit. Yes. <laughs> if you want to help, help. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, <laughs> stop. Shut up. Stop. We don't. We don't. You know. We're busy enough as it is. Yes, exactly. I'm too busy to be mocked, man. <laughs> Nobody got time for that. I got to cook dinner. I got to put on a show. I'm going to play. I got stuff to do. Exactly. <laughs> I got to send you an invoice, actually. All right. Yes. Got to go. All right. Have a great day, kids.